Has the show started already? This is amazing, you guys. I found this box in the basement when I was looking for Gilligan's Island stuff, and you will never believe what I found in this box. He sings, he dances, he's got a little top hat and cane. It's amazing. Watch, look. Ribbit. I swear he was doing it before. I swear. Shoot. What, are you, what am I going to do? Alright, alright. I see where this is going. And I knew that I should not have opened it. But I figured, you know, it was just a couple more minutes till uh, January 1st. 2021 or at least a couple hours but what they always say is well-behaved women rarely make history and that my friends is what tonight's episode of living figuratively is all about welcome to the new year's eve epiphany episode of living figuratively with your host moi judy takis um, Living Figuratively is the show that asks the question, why not fill your home with the fascinating faces and figures of people that you don't even know? Why not fill your home with figurative art? Each week, I introduce you to my own personal work or I show you pieces from my collection. In uh, December, we spent some time going out to art shows and we'll be doing that again. But tonight we're staying home for New Year's Eve, which is, I think, what a lot of people are doing tonight, hopefully, um, for the New Year's Eve Epiphany episode, where I'm going to unveil and introduce to you two new paintings from my Goddess Project, the Epiphany of Eve and the Epiphany of Pandora. Let's take a quick pan over to the pieces, and then... We'll talk about them a little bit. So basically, I had a major, the Goddess Project, for those of you that have not been tuning in, but, or maybe forget, the Goddess Project is where I re-examine the mythology and stories from all the religions through a contemporary feminist lens. And um, and I look, I look at stories and you know, see if I can reinterpret them in certain ways because they have contributed to our culture and our foregone conclusions and sometimes our prejudices. Um, so for the Goddess Project, one of the things that I do is I research different stories. Um, for my Epiphany of Eve and Epiphany of Pandora paintings, I found some similarities from one story to another. Essentially, the, um, the concept is that Eve was the first woman created in the Judeo-Christian religion, and Pandora was the first mortal woman created in the, um, in the Greek mythological religion. And according to the stories, both of them, when they sought knowledge, the world, the world fell apart. Everything bad happened. And so when I was looking for these similar stories, um, there were basically, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through each story, because you may not be totally familiar with the Pandora story, at least. Um, Pandora was the first woman created in Greek mythology, the first mortal woman created in Greek mythology to Zeus's exacting specifications. And the reason that she was created was because up until then, the mortal society was an all-male society. Apparently, it was just a bunch of guys. They were all, you know, very obedient, good, you know, prayed to the gods the way they were supposed to, did what they were told, and just had this fun all-male society. Um, apparently, Prometheus, if you remember his story, he was the demigod who brought fire to, um, to mankind. And at that time, it really was just mankind because it was all men. So Prometheus decided that these guys were maybe a little bit cold and maybe should be grilling their food instead of eating it raw. So he brought fire down to, down to them as a gift. Apparently, this angered Zeus quite a bit. Zeus then decided to 
balance out this wonderful gift that they got with a sort of a bad gift or a punishment. So for his punishment, he decided to create woman for them. And he started by creating Pandora, who was the first mortal woman. He presented her as a gift to, of all people, Prometheus's brother. So, and she came with her own, her dowry, I guess we could call it, which was this, you know, magical, golden, beautiful box. And the only instruction was, don't open the box. So Pandora, because she was a curious, knowledge-seeking woman, um, she did open the box. And lo and behold, it unleashed a world of hurt into the human, the human world. All the bad things, all the bad things got released. Uh, the only thing left in the box was hope. So I'm not super clear on the story of like whether that means that there is no hope in the world because it didn't get released, or whether you know the only thing we have left is hope. You know, either story makes sense, but I'm not clear. I'm not clear on what the exact meaning of that was. But the moral of that story is: if a woman seeks knowledge, she unleashes a world of hurt into the universe, or into the you know on Earth. Different details, different people. Same story happened in the Judeo-Christian Bible. So in here, God creates Adam and Eve. He creates Adam first, and you know takes creates Eve from his rib. Um, first mortal people to be created, and Eve. Uh, and you know he basically he tells them, you know, here you are, you're in paradise. You've got these lush gardens to hang out in. You, um, you've got these animals to lord over, and you can eat them because you're superior to them. Um, you have lots of sex because you're the only two people on earth, and that's one of the, you know, the orders that they like to dredge up when, you know, companies like Hobby Lobby decide to, you know, uh, refuse to pay for birth control for their employees. But that's a that's a separate point. But um, so basically, God told them, you know, have sex, enjoy. You know, Adam was like, ka -ching! you know, lots of government ordered sex. And here we are in this, these lush gardens. Eve was much more, you know, she wasn't content with that, that resigning herself to sort of this lazy life that God had given them for free. Um, she sought knowledge. Oh, yeah. And God had the one order like, don't eat from the tree of knowledge. That's the only thing you don't have to do. So Eve because she was knowledge seeking, decided to eat from the tree of knowledge. And apparently there was a snake there. Apparently the snake told her, you know, woo, come on, do this. And she did, took a bite of that apple, gave some to her husband because, you know, I guess she wanted an intellectual equal instead of just sort of him like, you know, just being, being her inferior. Um, and but basically that unleashed a world of hurt. They were condemned, they and all their children and you know all of humanity moving forward were condemned to, um, to go down to earth instead of to stay up in paradise, you know. And so the moral of both stories is, I'm sorry, the plot of both stories is woman seeks knowledge, unleashes world of hurt. The moral and lesson of both stories is woman don't seek knowledge, do as you're told, obey. And that is the moral that I want to reject with my two paintings. My two paintings are Epiphany of Pandora and Epiphany of Eve. So in my Epiphany of Pandora painting, instead of this magical golden box, she's opening a box of books from Amazon, no less. Um, and for both paintings, I've used books to symbolize knowledge. So she's opening a box of books, and I put a little bit of uh, symbolism into what the books actually are. The last one that she's pulling out of the box is Obama's Audacity of Hope, which you know is a little bit of a double, double, double meaning kind of thing. You know, the hope is still is still with us. Um, and I've also laid, I've also put my mom's book, uh, The Condo, which is where she wrote about the afterlife, you know, which right now she's finding out about the afterlife. Um, 
Also, she's, uh, my Pandora is pulling out the Song of Solomon by the wonderful Toni Morrison. And, um, you know, and she's delighting in her discovery. My Eve over here, I have ha had her, you know, she's taking a bite of the apple and the world is not crumbling, but she's discovering knowledge also symbolized by books. So I've got piles of different books down here. I've got Song of Solomon with the yellow, the yellow binding there. Um, in both of the store, in both of the paintings, I have this big fat, uh, you know, archaic Bible looking, by looking book. It actually is a Bible, but it's going to appear in other other paintings as symbolizing sort of the you know the, the knowledge of the ages and stuff like that, like an old symbolic book. Um, Eve. The, has the snake here, but the snake isn't like some, you know, big powerful creature. It's really just kind of like a garter snake, like, yeah, okay, you know, here's a garter snake that doesn't matter too much. Um, because she's seeking the knowledge herself and she's enjoying the apples. She's eaten quite a few of the apples. So, you know, it's no big deal. I've also put some of the ivy in the background. Um, one, of the, one of the things in the Bible is that as soon as she discovers knowledge, she discovers shame, meaning that she's ashamed of her body instead of proud of it um, as one of God's creations. Uh, Eve, my Eve actually has not discovered shame, so she is not covered, but Facebook has discovered shame and uses it to shame artists, which is why I've placed the uh, tasteful scarf there to cover her so that I don't get into you know Facebook trouble with it. But. So that's how that's how I'm showing both you know the the parallel stories, um, and uh, you know the Epiphany of Eve and the Epiphany of Pandora. The reason I called it Epiphany, Epiphany, it, it literally the word means a realization or a discovery. So like they're both discovering knowledge, they're discovering it through books. What I didn't know was that Epiphany is also an actual holiday with a date in the Catholic religion. So it, um, it is uh, January 6th, which is just next Wednesday, is the Epiphany. And what it stands for, it's the day that, and there's conflicting stories in, you know, in Wikipedia where I looked it up. Um, it's either the day that, that uh, God reveals himself incarnate um, as Jesus, the baby, you know, baby Jesus, so that, that's God incarnated on earth. Um, or it's the day that the three wise men came to visit, to see the baby Jesus having just been born. Uh, I always thought that that actually happened on Christmas Eve itself, like right after the baby was born. Um, but it actually would be pretty wise for these wise men to, you know, wait a couple days and let the mother bond with the baby for a couple days before, you know, getting visitors and getting all that frankincense and myrrh is not going to do anybody any good. Um, and because there's different stories and conflicting things, I'm sure I've got some of this wrong. So hopefully you will forgive me uh, for, you know, screwing up the details. I'm sure that's what Jesus would do. Um, Anyway, I also wanted to introduce you to my model, who, coincidentally, and it just actually worked out beautifully, perfectly, her actual name is Epiphany. Her name is Epiphany Perkins. You can follow her on Facebook. You can also follow her on Instagram at epiphany.cp. And she was wonderful, wonderful fun to paint. I painted her the day right before we went on lockdown here in Ohio. And um, I'm so glad I got the photo reference for that because then I was able to work on these two paintings during, during the lockdown. Before I did the actual paintings though, I did some studies. And that's something that I really should do more often because it's really, really helpful to do studies. And I had never painted Epiphany before, so it's good to just get a little bit of practice when you're painting new people. I'm going to show you the studies that I that I did. Um, I did two studies, one of each pose that uh, that she posed for. So this one is the study for Epiphany of Pandora, 
and this one is the study for Epiphany of Eve, and both of them are available on my uh, online shop. I framed them up in the silver leaf, which I think works really nicely for them, and they're almost the same size, so they can actually be stacked in the sort of uh, wedding cake configuration if you were somebody that wanted to get two of them. One of the things I also wanted to show you, I had a lot of trouble with the ivy. I'm glad that she wasn't covered with the ivy and I purposely put it in the background because I'm not an ivy painter. So, but I did do a sort of a preliminary study for the ivy too. And this is also available if you wanted to get one of my very, very, very few pieces that doesn't have a human element in it. Um, it's something that you could probably tuck into any old corner. So let's go back. Let's go back to the paintings. And I wanted to point out something else that you may or may not have noticed. Um, Eve and Pandora, the way that I have painted them, is a beautiful black woman. And what I'm what, what I'm trying to what I'm trying to do that with that is basically we've come to think of mythological and religious characters like all the people from the Bible, all the people from Greek mythology as white European people because the Renaissance artists and the classical artists were the ones that painted them and since then you know neoclassicism and all of them they were all white European artists painting white European looking people. But there's nothing in the scripture or the writing or any, any of that that says that God is white, Zeus is white, the people they created were white. There's nothing that says any of that. It's the artist that decided to depict them that way. And basically I'm an artist and so I've decided to depict the first woman created, the first mortal woman created in both religions as a black woman and um, it actually goes along with the whole concept of wimp women um, of black women who are seeking knowledge and you know historically many of the the black women that we've you know that we know as um, great historical figures have sought knowledge we've got you know Harriet Tubman we've got Rosa Parks um, Katherine Johnson Shirley Chisholm, Angela Davis, Kamala Harris, all seeking knowledge. Some of them have had to disobey the rules and the laws in order to do what is right. And um, so that's also part of the, the, the meaning of the whole, you know, of the whole Epiphany of Eve and Epiphany of Pandora paintings. And that is basically it for tonight. So thank you for joining me for Living Figuratively and thank you for listening to me talk about these paintings that I super, super love. I'll let you know where they're going to be showing in person, hopefully at some point before too long. Um, I don't have a specific place yet. But thank you for joining me for Living Figuratively tonight. Uh, come back next week, same bad time, same bad channel, where we will be taking the show back out on the road, seeking knowledge, we're going to head to the Artist Archives of the Western Reserve in uh, University Circle in Cleveland, Ohio to see About Body, About Face, which is a show of black figurative artists who are also seeking knowledge. And it's going to be really interesting. It's a fabulous show, so I can't wait to, um, you know, to take you there. Same bad time, same bad channel, January 7th, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the rest, and the rest, they don't even mention her by name, Mary Ann Summers, farm girl from Kansas, who won a three hour boat tour and then ended up spending three years on a desert island with seven other castaways. You were the best. Rest in peace. Don Wells.